Hello and a very warm welcome back to KGC Engineering and today again we're making progress with our mini project um, if you've followed the last two videos you'll see that we've had the light fittings have gone, the glass is out, the doors are now off, the panels are all loose, the bonnet's just sat on for now um, so today we're going to start stripping out part well the remainder of the interior of then look so that includes the steering wheel, the dash any bits of interior trim that's still in there, we'll try and get as much out of there today as possible because the date has come uh, for us to get this off to the acid dippers and it is literally in about two less than two weeks time so we've really got to crack on and get it done. So let's get started. Well the first item that I think we ought to take out is actually going to be the steering column. Um, so why are we taking it out? Well because it's generally in the way, because uh, we're going to need to get the dash out and all the other bits and pieces and the steering column is just going to get in the way. And it is actually quite simple to take uh, the column out, it is um, two bolts essentially which are holding it all in place. Now we're not going to um, put the, the column away completely uh, where we take it off, we're just going to put it away to one side so that um, once we've taken the dash out we can then drop it back on and we can still steer the car if we need to move it around the workshop um, you know, so it's just going to get put out of the way for the time being obviously there's going to be some wires to disconnect <coughs> to disconnect as well um, off, obviously off the column because we've got the, the washer system, the indicators, the horn you know, the, the usual things you find around the steering wheel are going to be on there um, so obviously we've got those to consider that we need to take apart um, but it is very very simple. In fact, I'll show you the the two bolts that we need to undo. Uh, let's grab the camera. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to see. So obviously, we've got the the steering wheel here, down the column, and uh, right down at the bottom. Uh, you should hopefully be able to see here. I've got a retaining bolt here, and we've also got one further up the column here. Um, um, and that. so that those are the ones we've got to undo and obviously we've then got to dig into the wiring to find out which connectors we need to disconnect um, which we can do once we've loosened the bolts up I think as uh, so we might get a little bit more movement a bit of plane there to give us a bit of easier access to get in um, so I'm just going to make a start um, and we'll get it undone hopefully Well, as you can see, we've now got the, the steering column out, and it, in all honesty, it was a bit of a sod. Uh, I think it's well, it, I don't think it's ever been off. Um, so, it, basically, the, the splines on the end that goes onto the actual steering rack had, mu had pretty much rusted it together. So, it's taken um, the use of getting the blow lamp out to heat up um, the actual column um, and some WD-40 and just. Some, leverage with the, the crowbar um, and, and eventually it did pop off. Well, it certainly took a while. It's not very often that that particular one sticks on. Usually the, the steering column is, you know, undo a couple of bolts and it pops off dead easily, but uh, one of those things. But anyway, it's off now, so it doesn't really matter. So <clears throat> now that we've got a lot more space in here, uh, we can have a look at getting are well, starting to get the, the, the dash apart. Now obviously we've got lots of bits on here. Uh, obviously we've got the main dash panel itself, we've got the, um, the air system coming in, we've got the heater elements at the bottom there and some electrical bits and there's lots of electrics and stuff behind here. Um, and there'll be the stuff for the uh, wiper motors as well. Um, uh, so there's, there's quite a bit of stuff really to take out. Uh, and it is just it basically a case of going through and just figuring out how it all comes apart. Um, and you, you will be doing a lot of it blind, because uh, obviously you can't see because the panel's in the way, you need to see how the panel comes out. Um, and usually that's sort of held in with a couple of clips sort of underneath here somewhere, or it may just pop out. I'll need to have a bit more of a better look 
at it. Um, well, you know, it's just one of those, just take your time and it will all eventually start to, to come apart. Um, uh, so it's basically a case of just get in there and uh, just crack on. All right. Well, I've just had a little bit of an exploration and I've opened the, the glove box compartment and inside here I've found that there's a couple of uh, wing nuts on some pretty long bolts which go through which obviously must hold the this main uh, wooden dash panel on. How it is at this end I'm not too sure. I imagine it's going to be the same um, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get to those uh, particular parts just yet. Uh, I mean, there is uh, a bit of a gap under there, so hopefully I'll be able to do it. Or it may be that like, the whole panel slides and it slots in. So I'm just going to undo the, these nuts here. Uh, one of them's actually got a lock nut on it, so that's not encouraging. Um, Quite long uh, bolts looking at them, these that go through, so you will need to certainly work from one end along. Uh, and you'll, as you might be able to see, I've got my hand behind the back of it at this end just to help pull it forward so we've got room to actually undo the wing nut on it. Uh, come on, that's out of one of them. Uh, I'm going to need a spanner, unfortunately, to get that one. It's a little annoying. Let's um, have a look. That size, I think. Oh, that was good, yes. Got the right size. And this will be where I wish I'd invested in some ratchet spanners. But, hey ho, I didn't, so. so. And there's a metal securing plate there as well. May take a little while to undo this one. I think it's a bit, uh, bit annoying that somebody's decided to put a lock nut in there, so you can't spin it off. Although I might get that with a long. Let's try the long ratchet on. can. Marvellous. Makes it a bit easier. He says. <laughs> so he's messing with that with a spanner. Obviously you could tell in here that um, the seats and the carpets are already out. Uh, and again, this is one of the reasons why we took the doors off uh, last time, so that we have plenty of good access um, into here, so that we can get in nice and easily so, to do what we need to do uh, without too much trouble. to go yet. I'd really like to know which idiot put this on. <laughs> Make it very difficult for others. What I'm hoping is that if I can get this main panel off, it'll then allow us easier access to get um, the electrics and things undone. Uh, because this shouldn't then be very much, if anything, in the way. Oh my word, that's still a massive way to go. Let's 
sorry this bit's a bit boring for you, but uh, I could, I suppose, put it on time lapse, but uh, not to worry. I'm sure you'll manage it. Come on. Near yet. Oh, we're nearly there. Come on, you've just been on it. Get back on it, you sod. There we go. Get it by hand, not last. Hooray! Right. Oh. So he's got a securing plate behind there. Obviously, that one's got a bit bent. I don't know. Oh, I think it might be supposed to be bent. Uh, so let's undo the next ones I can get to, which actually have the proper wing nuts on. So these will actually spin off a lot easier. Like I say, I don't know if there's any more along here. I imagine that there will be at least one on this side somewhere. I may be wrong. But we'll have a look and see. That's the other one. Securing plate. So just... Ah, now given how much that's bending, I think that we've got another one right at the front end, just up here, it's next to the gate. I think we've got one about there. You can just see there's a bit of movement there, but not a lot. So I'm just going to push that back in a bit. And I'm just going to have to have a bit of a feel up underneath, try and work my way in. Let's see. There, on this we can. So obviously we don't want to damage anything if we can avoid it. Um, that's the back of there. It's very difficult to get in actually, as the gauges are all there. Sometimes happens. Now then, I wonder if we can pop that out. Oh, let's just give it a little pull and just have a look and see. Ah, yes, there is one. And just see it, it is about there. So, how do we get to that? Is the question. A very good question. That's what we could do with getting to that. Now then. See anything? Ah, right, there's a. So, right, so let's move some of this. Ah, right. And there seems to be a piece of uh, felt or something in there. It's just in the way a bit. So, like I say, you do you end up doing quite a few of these things a little bit blind because you just you can't see. What are you doing? Oh, there's a, like I say, there's a piece of felt or something in here, which is just getting another pokey stick. Just poke it 
out of the way a bit if we can. So if we can get it out of the way, it might have half a chance of getting in there. It's going to be a tight fit, mind. Very tight fit. Can't see. Still can't see. <laughs> Come on. Are we winning? We might be winning. I don't know. Aha, ah, you can get to the bottom one. Just, just to get it to turn now, that's the question, isn't it? It's very, very, very awkward to get to the door. Get to, that's it. We can push that out, perhaps, and get in. That is very tight on there, annoyingly. Of course, it's one you can never quite get to, which is the tightest. Come on, you little bugger. Oh, go on. Go on, you know you want to. Yes, winning. You might be able to hear that, but that's one of the wing nuts coming off. Oh, it's come off. Just need to get to the other one now. Yep, that's moving now as well. Excellent. I think we have to find an easier way to get them back on. Right. Hopefully now and then. There we go. Ah, right. Radio. He's holding us in now. Unplug that. Yeah, Bob. Hooray! So that's the, the dash out. Well, the main cover panel for it anyway. You might be able to just see in here. I'll just try and get a bit of light in there. Um, hopefully you'll be able to sort of see in there now. If I just zoom in as well. Um, get it in position. But I had to try and get my hand up behind here uh, to get in to undo. The two, uh, the two bolts because you just couldn't get in. So that was really uh, quite annoying. So whether all this needs to go in afterwards from underneath or something, I'm not too sure, but we'll uh, have to figure out a better way of getting in there uh, later on uh, when we come to start putting it all back together. So yeah, so that's that panel out anyway. Whew. That's zoom out and uh, I'll just put the uh, this dash panel back together so as always put the all the bracketry back on uh, with the nuts so I know where they came from so on the other side I'm glad that wasn't too difficult to get off I had a feeling that it would be uh, was going to be a bit more of a sod than uh, it's been, uh, so I'm quite pleased really with that. Uh, I think it's just one of those things you sort of, you, you don't necessarily get fearful of it, but you just you do wonder sometimes: is this going to be a nightmare, or is it going to behave itself? And uh, thankfully, once I'd figured out how it came apart, it. Uh, did come apart quite well. So, 
Right, so I'll just put that on over there and have to get a good clean up and be able to go back on at some point. Alright, so what have we got left in here now? Oh, the wedge. Uh, I'll see we've got uh, the gauges um, which seem to be on this rather large brackety thing of some sort which it seems to have lost its fixings. So obviously this has got to come out somehow and there's bits of pipe and plastic all over the place here. I don't know what's going on. Let's get switches and relays. All sorts, all sorts of bits in here, which I'm not sure whether they should be in here or not. I don't think they should if, for a lot of them. Let's get a uh, piece of felt out of the way. Uh, right. uh, you might be able to see here, um, uh, obviously I've not undone anything for the gauges, but they're very loose, obviously. So their fixings have obviously gone AWOL somewhere. Um, for where it's supposed to clip in, um, as I was sort of expecting that or to sort of move forward and come out with the uh, main dash panel which we've just removed. So let's have a little bit of a look at what's going on behind here. Um, Ah, there we go. If I swing it that way, we can see. So I'm just going to undo the speedo. Should be this one up here. Seems to be. What on earth is going on? We're going off of this. That's. All these wires off. Ow! Bugger. I'm not sure if this is this has a custom dash on it or something. This. In now it's just the up here, it's just be this uh, speedo cable, which is non sort of original. So I'm zooming in there again. Let me have a look at this. Um, there's a most uh, cars. This, this is the connection here, this white bit here. Uh, on most oop, classics, it uh, just basically unscrews. It seems to have this uh, white plastic, uh, it appears to be like a retaining clip of some sort, stopping it coming off, which is a bit annoying really. This white thing supposed to come off first, or what? Ah, ah, it moves. Oh, part of it moves anyway. Oh, there we go. Phew, that was a bit of a struggle. But anyway, there's the gauges, and I think we'll uh, definitely come up with a better way of getting uh, 
that lot in and on. Now that's uh, been a bit of a struggle, in all fairness. There's a few connections on the back of this. I'm very unfamiliar with this, um, these type of games. Ah, that's why the Japanese. All right. I have to see if we can come up with something a bit better. Oh, it's covered in snow now. Yeah, so I think this has very much been a custom job to uh, get it to fit. Bit of a shame, really. Still, I can go uh, with the rest of the bits. Alright. So what else have we got? More felt. Ooh, you can see some wires. More wiring. Now I'm going to have to uh, replay this uh, video and start going to put some of this back together. <laughs> I think it's inevitable. <laughs> uh, for something. It is amazing what you find in cars at times. They're out of the way. So, what have we got left in here? Oh, I'm sorry, that's all gone dark on you, hasn't it? Let's pull that back out again. Uh, so, I've just pulled out some more of the, the felt stuff which seemed to be retaining a lot of things in place. Um, now we've got the, the dash panel out. Um, so, sort of work your way through and just try and see where things go. So this has got all this lovely wiring in here which feeds into the main loom which is there. Another thing there which needs to be unscrewed. We've got the ventilators for the uh, screen and actually let's pull that out. This one you might remember from the last video when we were taking the doors apart. That's the uh, the door bump stop uh, to stop it going out too far. So we'll take that out and put that to one side. Whilst we're here doing that, Sensor console here, actuators and things, more wires. No idea what this is. This is where my electrics guru will uh, be very useful to put all the wiring back in. I admit I'm not uh, the best when it comes to wiring. I can do the odd bit, uh, and solve some problems, but uh, for other bits, uh, I've got a very good friend who comes in uh, and joins us about once a week or so and does the, the wiring jobs and a few other mechanical bits for us. Purely because he's just uh, he knows the stuff so well, so well, that's all that uh, the man who knows what he's doing do the job. All right. Let's pull this out of it if we can. So this is the little centre control panel. 
So obviously we've got um, a number of switches on here, uh, heated screen, lights, and that. Uh, and it looks like the uh, choke cable as well. So these ought to just uh, split off from the back. It's a standard British Leyland type switches by the looks of it. Part, and then shoot forward like that. <laughs> we'll keep all the switches together nice and safe. We're not too fussed about the wiring that's going to have a new loom going in this. Um, let's get the plugs undone. But if we can retain the switches, then all the better. So the only thing we'll have on here, I think, is this one. It should be choke cable, I think it is, looking at it. If this still has a choke, actually. Some cable of some sort. Typically, it would be a choke cable, but uh, I may be wrong. Come on. So that's. Ow! That one. Done. As he stabbed himself once again. Right. So, I'm going to have to go for a hunt underneath the bonnet to see if I can find where this one goes to. Typically, it does look like either a choke or a heater valve. It could be the heater, actually. Um, which, obviously, then I'll need to undo and pull that through to get that piece off. Um, and then this slightly padded frontage should then be able to come off. So I'll go and have a look and see if that is the heater valve. Alright, well, as you may be able to see, I managed to actually disconnect um, that part, and it was the, the heater um, <sighs> switch thing. Whatever, yes, I had to disconnect it in the engine bay anyway. Um, and then I was able to get the lower part of the dash covering off, and it, it took a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery, but it did, um, much by working it, it did eventually pop out and, and come off. Um, so I had a little look at how to get this top one off, and I've taken the uh, the ashtray out, um, and I found that there's three uh, bolts located underneath which hold all this top bit on here. Um, so I'm going to take that out, which will then hopefully allow us access to the heater uh, vents uh, to to clear the screen screen vents. Um, so I hope to be able to get those off out of the way, which then might release some more wiring and stuff like that. Um, so let's have a look and see how easily this uh, top bit of the dash comes off. Well, surprisingly, that wasn't too difficult. Uh, lots of things on this car have uh, been a little bit difficult uh, to take apart. I think it's a mixture of the fact that it's never been apart before uh, since it was put together, and the fact that it's been sat outside uh, slowly rusting away for the last 18 months or so, um, whilst it was at the Northwest Mini Centre. But not to worry, because we're going to get it all sorted. So. Now I've got that front dash panel uh, piece off, <coughs> trim piece off, we can now look at getting these heater parts off which blow onto the screen uh, and they do very simply unscrew from the top or they should unscrew simply from the top.
So, put one to one side for a minute. So then, these bits should all come apart and then just be able to twist and pull it off the actual heater mechanism. Then that can go in a box. Uh, like with all uh, the other heater parts once we got the rest of it apart. So I can now get the other side off as well. It should be quite similar when you look. Come on. There we go. Knew it'd give up eventually. There we go. Pull that one out. Down there. Twist and pull. Pull it all out. And I'll just pop the screws back in the top because we're probably going to be able to reuse those because it's pretty good still, but we may well put new ones in see how we feel at the time, but well, at least this way we know we've got the, the screws for them and these will get labelled for left and right uh, before we put them back in the box, or before we put them in the box, we've not put them in a box at all yet, uh, yeah, so that we know which side was on which, so that they go back on the correct side as well. You know, the parts are pretty much identical. Right, that's those out. Uh, so what else have we got in here now? Well, obviously we've got the main heated part there. Um, but I think I'd like to get rid of some of this wiring first if I can, or at least get a little bit more organised out of the way. Uh, I can also try and get rid of some more of this insulation, the soundproof insulation which is uh, in here um, and that. there's a few other bits and pieces there's uh, feels like oh yes we've got a door switch to take off here as well I've got to deal with a spot of the cable going in there for it that was all that's why I saw that one um, we've got the bonnet release to take off um, so the heater and this insulation stuff so we're nearly in some ways, we're almost there with the uh, front end of this now. Um, so I'm just going to start getting the various bits off. I'll put it onto time lapse so you're not getting bored. Um, and then we'll see where we are. It might be a case we're just at the stage of take out the, uh, the heater then. Well, hopefully you can see now that I've cleared some of the wiring out of the way. Um, and that, and there's, I think there's obviously been a lot of other additional bits of wiring gone into this car over the years. Um, but not to worry because we can tidy and sort all that out at a later date. Uh, obviously when we're putting the wiring back in. So that's a long way to go yet. So really the next job is going to be to get the heater out. Now. I have a feel of the heater pipes which come from this side and I can feel that they're quite corroded inside, it feels there's some sort of rust and corrosion in there. So instead of trying to undo them, uh, I'm actually just going to get the hose cutters on and I'm just going to cut the hoses um, just so that they're out of the way. But I'm going to cut them up near the top so if there is any water in there it's not going to be pouring out all over the place. And um, hopefully it's going to cut them. Oh, there is a bit of water in there. But 
but uh, not a loss and nothing uh, to worry about on that one. And let's do the same with this one. Woohoo! That one sprayed a bit. Uh, a little bit more in that one, I think. Uh, but not to worry. A good set of hose cutters is a very useful tool to have. Um, if you do find that you're going to need to uh, cut the, the hoses like like I just have, uh, and you can pick them up for about 10 15 quid or something, so not too expensive. It's easier than trying to cut through with a Stanley knife or anything like that. So, I'm just having a little feel to see how this actually attaches at the back because I know it's a single screw at the it's two screws at the front. We've already taken one out uh, a little earlier. Um, so I'm just having a feel, and I can feel that there's a bolt there um, on one side. So I don't know if that's a long fixed bar or something. Uh, certainly going to need a long socket to get on it. I know that much. So let's have a look and see what size socket that is. That water absolutely stinks <laughs> as well. Which, uh, doesn't always help. Let's have a look. Let's see if it's that size. Which I'm hoping it will be. Oh, the socket's not even long enough for that. That's a massive item there. You can actually just get the socket on. Oh, can't even get the socket anywhere near that. Ah, it just moved. Might be in luck here. It is dripping on me. <laughs> ah. Right. Now then, is the one on that side? And so. Uh, Ah, it just slots in at the back. Right, in that case then, let's undo this screw and see what happens. Well, that looks promising. Right, let's get in there. I've really been quite naughty and not actually put some of this stuff away yet from today. Right, go for not to get the gear sticky in a place where we don't want it. have extracted the heater unit which is now all wet and horrible excellent so oh god that water really does stink gee whiz Ugh. so now we've actually got a bit more room uh, to get this lower half of the wiring loom through the through the hole there uh, we can also get the carpet out a bit more I think uh, and possibly some more of this insulation on the underside so very slowly we're actually getting there with uh, we're stripping all this out Whew. right well, now I've had a bit of a tidy up in here um, and as you can see you've got all the wirings ready to go out so that's we're going to leave that as it is for now. Um, but I thought whilst I was in here I'd show you uh, some of the corrosion that's uh, taken place here and just have a look at this inner wing here and see there's a lot, a lot of rust is in there and it really is in an awful state. Um, but the good news is uh, we can get um, new inner wings so that's no problem and uh, you can see it's had welding repairs there before as well and it's the same story on the other side it's not as bad but it is very 
badly corroded up at the top there where the, the lamp is shining. Uh, just try and give you a bit of light in there. Um, but yeah, see, it is one of those things that uh, when this comes back from being um, acid dipped, there's certainly going to be a lot less of it um, than we'd hoped, perhaps. But um, we can get all the bits, it is all repairable, um, so we're not going to panic about it. The rest of the car, in general, is very solid. So, what's next? Well, we've got obviously all the back end here, and uh, so we've got the last bits of remaining seats, um, the, the trim around um, the, the pockets, uh, that seat belts, and there's a few other bits to tidy away. Um, um, there's the interior light as well, which is just up there, and then obviously there's the headlining and the bits of trim on the seat posts at the back there, as well as um, the, the speakers on the parcel shelf. And then that is pretty much the interior um, taken out then, which is a good stage to be at um, because all that stuff is then, it's, it's a way it's done. You can then focus on getting the outside completed, which for us, the next jobs after this will certainly be um, the fuel tank is on the high priority list, obviously. Um, then the rest of the work is pretty much in the engine bay because uh, we've got lots and well, we've got everything to get out of there. So I'm going to crack on and get all these bits and pieces out of here um, and, and that is probably going to take us to the end of the day but uh, let's see how we get on Well, what a day that has been. Um, hopefully you'll have seen in the last time lapse sequence that I actually forgot to take off the sun visors and the rear view mirror when I started taking down the headlining. It's a silly mistake, but at least I realized it before I got just a little bit too far. So if you are taking uh, bits apart on your car, do remember to watch out for bits that might just get in the way, such as those sun visors. So anyway, that's enough uh, for this video for today. <coughs> enough for this video for today. Sorry. Um, obviously, we've got a bit of a way to go still, but the car is hopefully, as you can see, now progressing really well on its strip down. We've discovered there's quite a lot of rust involved with this car, and all that is going to get treated and sorted out at the acid dippers, and then obviously when it comes back, we'll be putting in new panels as required and doing all the welding repairs then. So anyway, next time I'm going to be looking at getting the fuel tank out. I'll probably have get the car jacked up and start getting the underside stripped out because we've got um, wiring loom, brake lines, the fuel line to go get out, and a few of the bits and pieces from the underside which need to come off. Um, and then the big lump is going to be the engine. So that's going to be a separate video a bit later on, I have a feeling. Uh, I'm going to try and get as much of the other bits and pieces off first, then leave that till very much near the end, uh, and then before it goes for dipping, obviously we'll drop the sub, we'll drop it off the subframes uh, and onto the dolly, ready for it to go. Uh, obviously by then the car ought to be completely stripped down. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well, so that you can follow this mini on its classic car restoration project. So until next time, happy classic motoring.